All right, first of all, Kai, thanks so much for joining us on the show. It's really nice to meet you. Can we just talk about your form at the moment? Some of the best we've seen of you in recent weeks in the Premier League. What has Mikel Arteta done? What tweaks has he made to bring so much out of you, your potential, particularly in front of goal? Yeah, um, I mean, he helped me from the first minute I arrived. Um, I think he showed me a completely different spectrum of how to play football, which I've never experienced before. Um, and yeah, how to make myself better on the, on the pitch as a player. And um, I think in the last couple of weeks it, it worked quite well. And um, yeah, I'm just uh, so, help, uh, so happy he helped me with a lot of things. And I um, think he's someone who wants to improve uh, the players um, on a daily basis. And I think that's uh, also what makes him special. You say different spectrum. Are you able to explain that or is that internal secret between the two of you? No, I mean just um, I think I've never like had a coach before which um, was so detailed um, as, a, as a coach and um, showed so many different things um, which are important on the, on the football field or I, maybe I, I didn't, even, didn't even know them um, before he told me um, to take care of some things on the football field, which um, yeah, he showed me, and um, yeah, I think uh, I think that helped me a lot. Mm. Um, you've had a relationship with Jorginho prior to your move to Arsenal. Here, were there any conversations between the two of you before you moved here? Yeah, well, we spoke before, um, and obviously I, s I played with him at Chelsea for for three years, so. I know him quite well, and um, yeah, just just ask him, um, yeah, um, how it is, and um, yeah, he just spoke to me um, and um, said uh, his honest opinion about everything, and he was, I think, already after six um, months, so much in love with the club, um, with the coaches and everyone, uh, with the players, and obviously that makes, uh, yeah. Um, my decision as well easier because um, I spoke to um, the coach and everyone as well and for me it was like after after the chat with the coach and uh, with the, with the board it was clear that I want to uh, come here um, so yeah I really um, enjoy it. Well he sings high praises of you every time in interviews can you sort of describe to us your on-pitch interactions and chemistry during matches with Georgina? I think Georgie is a player I don't even have I don't even have to speak with him on the pitch. I think we know telepathically. Yeah, <laughs> I just I, sometimes I feel like he just looks at me or I look at him and we both know what's going to happen uh, next. Yeah, he's uh, for me one of the best players I've played with um and um yeah, f so so nice to play with him because I think he knows um uh, my movements. I know like his his uh, passing and um which ideas he has in his in his mind. So, um, yeah, I love to play with him. Is he one of those players that you feel sometimes, despite how good he is, still doesn't get enough credit because he does those little things that maybe people generally aren't able to spot yeah. or unable to see? Like, what are some of the things that underrated that you feel about him? Um, I mean, in general, the whole football industry now is only about goals and assists. And when you don't, I mean, he's a player who's more on the, on the other part of the pitch and not so much in the box. So obviously people, um, they speak more about players that score and that are making uh, assists and have goal contributions. But um, I think he's one of those players. He's like the mind behind, of, behind all, of, uh, all of us. And... Um, yeah, he sets he sets the tone on the on the football pitch and gives the rhythm. Um, and I mean, I think he was third at the Ballon d'Or and he won the European Player of the Year. So that I think shows everyone enough that um, yeah, he's one of the the greatest uh, on his position. Let's reflect on your time at Bayer Leverkusen. How has your time there at the club shaped you and developed you as a player? I mean a lot um, as a young player. Um, yeah, I always um, yeah I love to play there. I think they gave me um, yeah the freedom to 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 play on my f on my on my favorite positions. To gave me like a lot of trust even in bad moments, and they just counted on me. And um, yeah, f the first couple of years it was just so so good to have them and um, yeah to 
that they helped me, of course, they helped me a lot um, in the first couple of years because as a young kid you come to the professionals and not everything is easy. Sometimes you, you're going to get some tough moments as well, but everyone was behind me there. I mean, I played there uh, 10 years, so it's going to be always in my memory. And um, yeah, I'm very happy that they're doing so, so good at the moment. Well, you're still in school when you're at Bayer Leverkusen. I mean, at some points you have had to miss like Champions League games yeah. because you have exams, right? Was that an easy decision for you just to ensure that you've got school down before football? Uh, I don't think so. I mean, I was fuming, <laughs> I think, um, when the coach told me that he's not going to pick me because I had an exam. Um, I think it was against Atletico Madrid we played. And um, yeah, I need to do an exam on the next day and couldn't play the Champions League. But... At the end, when I look back at it, I think they all made the right calls and all did the right decisions. Um, so I just, I'm, I'm happy. I think I did this also with the school and didn't stop it because um, yeah, it kept kept me uh, grounded as well. And um, yeah, it was was nice there. Of, of course, it was tough as well, but mm. obviously they helped me a lot with everything. How does that juggling school and football change your perspective on the importance of education? for young players, or you're still young, but younger players who mm -hmm. aspire to make it in football? It is um, very important. Um, I mean, I had players where I thought they're going to make it um, to the best clubs in the world and they didn't even become a professional footballer. So, I mean, uh, nowadays, uh, yeah, maybe it changed a bit, but um, parents, they kind of force their kids into becoming professional football player and um, I think sometimes that's not 100% right. I think the kids have to do whatever they want, first of all, and the education is something very important and uh, going to school and um, writing those exams and having something uh, in your pocket when s football is not working out is, I think, very important. And um, yeah, my parents, they helped me with that as well. They always said to me, you have to go to school. You can do your, your football uh, as well, but mm. you're going to go to school, you're going to do your exams and um, then you, we're going to see what's going on with football and obviously in that moment I was fuming about it, but afterwards I think when I look back at it, it was all the right calls. Can I ask you what was your favorite subject in school and what did you not enjoy? I didn't have one favorite subject. <laughs> no. I, I like to have, uh, I always like to, to do sport, but I'm probably bad in anything so <laughs> <laughs> I mean uh, I had Spanish there which I kind of enjoyed but the rest I don't know it was just school for yeah. you it was just school, school. Yeah. well we did have uh, two of our pundits over the weekend um, who are obviously are big fans of you they do have a question to ask I'm gonna uh, start very first and foremost a question from Danny Mills how has he dealt with all the pressure and the criticism from outside, not within the football club. Does he hear it? Does he listen to it? Does it affect him in any sort of, of way? Because in the last two months, he's really come good, you know, and, he, and he's showing that sort of form he's done. Mikel Arteta obviously believes in him, but yeah, just ask him how hard is it not mm. to listen to that criticism from the outside? Right, so how hard is it? <clears throat> um... Yeah, it is hard, of mm. course. Um, I mean, in a world like this, where everyone reads everything, you see everything uh, on social media, obviously um, you read it and it's not the nicest feeling, but it's part of the job. It's um, part of the job that people criticize you. Um, and obviously sometimes I was uh, at home and I didn't feel good about it, but on the next day I woke up and I said to myself, go again. and. Uh, prove it that they are wrong and I think that's just uh, the right thing to do because um, at the end it's my life, it's my football career and it's what I'm doing out of it and for me that's the most important. I want to make myself happy and not everyone else happy and that's the most important thing for me um, to enjoy my football and um, I knew there are going to be better times of course um, but obviously yeah, the noise is not always nice but to be honest, I am not the one who always like reads social media and stuff like that. But obviously nowadays you can't um, look away from it and you hear um, some, some comments always. But for me, I just try to focus on myself, enjoy my, my life, enjoy my football and um, enjoy the time with my teammates and just learn every day and get better and prove um, 
the, the people wrong that speak bad about you. Well, just one final one to close it out. It's going to be really easy for you, actually, Sam Petrov. Just with few words to describe Mikhail Arteta. That's yeah. it. Nice and simple. OK, so how would you <laughs> describe Mikhail Arteta? Give us three words then. Oh, my God, I'm so bad in this. Um, it's hard to describe him because he's so vers versatile. How you say okay, this? versatile. He, he's um, yeah, unbelievable in coaching players and like, I don't know, I've never seen something like this. Sometimes he tells me before the game what's going to happen and then I score a goal exactly how he told me before the game, how I scored the goal. So it's, um, he knows before the game sometimes what's, what's going to happen. Obviously, there are some things you can't control on the pitch, but um, I think he just makes everyone a better person and a better player, and that's what uh, count, count most for me. Well, that's more than three words, yeah, but we'll I take know, it. Sorry. We'll take it. Right. <laughs>